Hey guys, into another day. We are working on the differential to put in this. So this is the diff that was in this truck. And I got some brackets and stuff we gotta cut off. These was the traction bars for the off, off the first gen. So we're gonna cut those off, dress all this up. Um, and then obviously we gotta pull the brakes and all that stuff off, put new emergency brakes. But I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unhook the lines and everything, and then we will um, put this all in and I'll do the brakes and stuff while it's, while it's uh, in there. So we're just gonna get it all cleaned up and painted. So today's uh, objective is to get it all cleaned up and then hopefully put a coat of paint on it basically from this point over to this point is what I'm hoping. So I'm gonna get this all cut off, get everything dressed up, and we'll prep for paint is my goal. So that's what we're doing right now. So I'm gonna torch this stuff off on both sides, and then we will um, start cleaning it up. So if you wanna come along for the ride, here we go. Cause I just wanna hear it out your mouth, yeah Give me fuel, it's a tool that I use To go ahead and run my f mouth, yeah I take shots, I take loss, I make shots, I miss lots I tell you get big boss, you get yachts You swing lots and pop off a big shot I ain't done chasing, got big dreams, bigger things, impatient Who's at the top think they need replacement? Who's at the top think I'm gonna erase that face it? I don't give up quick, I don't give up I won't give up this Cause I know that I want it, know that I'm on it I'll make it, I promise Alright guys, so I got the diff cover off. You've seen I got this thing kind of cleaned up a bit here. I think it's good enough for what we're doing. I'm going to be putting POR15 on it, so it doesn't need to be perfect, nor do you want it perfect when you're using POR15. Um, but I found that one of the, the bolts in the rear cover was leaking, so I figured I should just pull it off. It's super easy right now. Um, I give it a quick scrape. I get people to ask me about these scrapers all the time. There'll be a link in the description for them. It's a carbide scraper. This one's a Mac one, but they're made by Lyle. Um, I'll put a link in the description for these if you guys are interested. Super, anytime you're using a scraper, there's this one and then a, a narrower one. They're the cat's meow. Um, all I do is just give it a quick scrape. <clears throat> You'll see there's like a little bit of residue left in where they surfaced it. I'm never worried about that. The silicone will adhere to that. Um, I clean the diff cover. I throw it in the parts washer because I have a parts washer to throw it in. And then on the bolt side of things, um, I just take them over to the wire wheel and clean them up a little bit, get the crap and corruption off. Um, something I did want to mention, if you're using the right stuff or case sealant or whatever you're using, um, when you go to take these diff covers off, man, they're stuck on there. So I don't know, you'll probably see it in the uh, time lapse, but what I did was I just took the torch. You don't have to use an oxyacetylene torch. You can just use a propane torch or a map gas torch and take all your bolts out and just heat up around now, obviously, if it's in the truck, I'll leave this one bolt just loose so the diff cover can't fall off on you. But if you heat that up around there a little bit, it'll come off way easier. You don't have to chisel at it. So, and you, I don't know, there again, it was in the time lapse, so I don't know how easy it would be to see. Um, but it came off relatively easy, and it's been on there for a few years. So, well, I got this all done up. This is a mag on your Dana 80, this is a magnet, your drain plug. So make sure you clean that off. I got new, uh, I got the right stuff on there because we had a tube of it I wanted to get used up. So we are going to put this back on, tighten all the bolts back down, clean everything up. And then I'm not sure, it's almost seven o'clock tonight. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna continue working on this if I'm gonna start painting. I haven't decided yet. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna get the diff cover on there before it sits there and dries. And uh, yeah, we'll get after that. I myself in my psyche. I'm 
going off every chance I get I don't really take a loss, well I'll admit That's why I'll make it to the top, yeah I commit And no I'm Alright guys, so I got the diff cover on there Something I wanted to mention That I know that a lot of guys don't do <clears throat> Or I've seen anyway, I shouldn't say a lot of guys don't do Was <clears throat> If you look at, if you go back in the video a little bit You can see where I put the The, the um, case sealant Or RTV I put a line and then I go around the bolt hole and around the bolt hole and then I end up going around the other side. And the reason that I found to do that is a lot of guys I find they'll do it and then they go around like this and then like this around. And what'll happen is the bolts will start leaking. So I do it on both sides. You just kind of give a little, you know, you can either, you know, start and go like this kind of around and then loop around. But I find if you do that, your bolts don't leak. So that's just a little helpful tip tip for you guys that have never done diff services um if you've never done a diff service and you've never done one on your truck and you don't know the last time that one was done uh you should do one so anyways just thought i would mention that and i think i am going to paint it tonight because i would like to get this thing in uh, as soon as i get it in then i can get the brakes done and all that jazz so i think that i'm going to spend the time and I'm, it's probably going to take me i don't know half an hour 45 minutes which is going to bring me probably till eight o'clock but it'll be painted and then hopefully tomorrow it's dry enough that we can take it out of there or off of there and put it in the truck is what I'm hoping. Um, because I would like to get this, I wanna get this thing as done as possible. And we also have to dig out of the diff pile. We have to get the rear end for this thing. So, so that we can figure out how much we need to narrow it, get it narrowed so I can get the axles ordered for it because I'd imagine it'll take a little while for the axles to show up. Um, and then obviously we got to start working on the engine and a bunch of other stuff So we got a bunch of stuff to do this and a bunch of stuff to do this I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up So instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time? You're delirious, mysterious Because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up No, I don't take sh I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up No, I don't take sh I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent Mental health is confidence, dreams and some honestness I'm not here to save the day, that's for you to take away I could play a million mind games, but instead of say something not a legend I really should have used a, tar or a, a grease and wax remover There's a little bit of fish eye on it, but it'll be okay It'll smoothen itself out. I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. I do want to drive this truck, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It. Uh, yeah. I probably should have made it perfect and power coated everything, but yeah, it is what it is. Don't mind the. I got the water running, warming up the water. It takes a little while at night because I'm pretty dirty. So we are basically done this at this point. I've already went through this diff a few years ago, so I'm not worried about anything being wrong with it. Um, so we're going to take this when it gets dry We'll go in taking the diff out of this and putting it in here get the brakes and all that stuff done Get as much done to this thing as we can until Neil is ready for it for the cut and polish right now is their busy time um, So I'm not sure it might end up going to my house first and then coming back and then going over to him I'm not sure yet, but so working on shorty some more um, Don't mind me hobbling around today uh, I'm Having problems with my back and my one leg is not happy. So we got the diff all painted um 
One thing that you need to pay attention to when you're painting stuff like this, I got a really good layer of paint on it. It looks fantastic, but I got some drips on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but I'm not too worried about that because I got to have to weld on a couple things across the bottom of this anyway. So when I do that, I'll grind the, the drips off and then I'll just repaint it. So I'm not too worried about it. And that one thing nice about this paint too, if you want, you can um, sand the bumps off. Anyways, I'm not worried about the bumps or the drips. We will fix that later. So we got a few drips, like I said, but this thing, I would rather have a really good coat of paint on it and not rust. So all that is good. So we are now in the need of taking this rear end out of here. So what I'm gonna do, which I've actually already done, is we need to, I guess I gotta get on the other side. I got light on the other side. So you guys can see something. So you guys can see something. I got the U-bolts loose on both sides. So uh, I'm just gonna loosen the drive shaft or pull a drive shaft and we'll let the truck down, get the rear end out, and then we're gonna put this rear end underneath the truck. But first, when I do, I wanna take this overload out because I don't, I don't foresee needing that overload. I was thinking about taking one more spring too, or one more leaf, but I think I'm just gonna leave it in there for now, um, and then uh, we'll deal with it from there. I'm just not 100% sure. I'm gonna take the overload out for sure. So we're gonna pull the rear end down. We're gonna pull that overload out, and I don't know It'll probably be, it'll be in the same video. I just don't know whether or not um, it'll be tonight when I put the rear end back in because the center bolts usually don't like to come out and these are the original center bolts that were in the frame. So they're probably not gonna work. So I'll probably have to get center pins tomorrow, but we will see what it does. So I'm gonna put you guys in a time lapse. I am gonna get that rear end out and the overloads off and see what we got. So. That's what I'm doing. turned off I got the rear end out not sure if it videoed or not if it didn't um, well you just take the bolt the u-bolts off and it comes out but um, u-bolts I didn't have any of the brakes or any of that stuff hooked up I had the drive shaft and the u-bolts snug they weren't even tight so I took this overload out you guys would have seen me doing that um, on both sides I had to thread the center pin a little bit longer or a little bit uh, a little bit more so that it would um, squeeze the bolt down far enough or the springs down far enough we are taking that rear end out putting that rear end in i am just going to jack the or use the engine crane to lift it up off the stand so i can get it over here tighten one wheel one wheel nut on each one get it over here get the truck back down on top of it and snug everything up pretty easy process when you just had it out and you're not fighting with anything everything's still new it's a super easy process not that it's that hard to do anyway but that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna lift this thing up and we're gonna bring it over there. Something I did wanna to mention to you guys, if you are doing this, what I recommend is, I, like I clean these all up and paint them obviously, but you wanna clean this all up, make sure you clean out the hole for the center pin to go in. And then what I do is either take grease or any seize or something and put a good coat on the inside of this so that it doesn't rust. Cause this likes to get full of rust because there is holes that go all the way through on both sides. So it fills up with garbage. You could fill the holes too, I suppose. Put a little tiny dab of silicone or something on them, but I just fill them with, with um, anti-seize or grease or something, and they don't have to worry about it. So let's get after it. Tonight, all right, I'm gonna call it for a night. 
had enough. My back's telling me I've had enough. So got the rear end. The U-bolts are just snugged up in there. They're not obviously not tight. You guys see me. Wow, well, you probably would have seen me with the impact gun. Tighten them up uh, or snug them up. So that's where I'm going to leave her off for night tonight. Probably tomorrow, as long as I feel okay. We're going to switch the brakes or the rotors off of this diff. S probably do emergency brake shoes inside there unless they're good. I honestly can't remember if I looked at them the last time I had it apart, which was quite a few years ago. But anyways, we'll change those if they need to be changed. I'm going to buy a set of those. Uh, we'll put the new calipers, new pads, new rotors, all that stuff on there, and then pl probably plumb the brakes, put the drive shaft back on, all that type of stuff tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know how far we'll get, but that's what we're, we're after anyway, and tight, uh, torque the U-bolts so that we don't have to take them off, cut the U-bolts. Oh. I actually probably won't cut them because I think I'm going to put a set of arson bars on the back of this and the arson bars um, I'll put a picture up here what they look like but just for you guys that don't know just bear with me for a second oh, not moving too fast today we are basically the arson bars you re are going to replace the lower um, U-bolt bracket. There's a better name for it, but I'm not with it right at the moment. But that, it's gonna replace that. So it'll bolt up to the axle like so. So I think I'm just gonna leave those as they are right now so that when I get the arson bars, I can just take that off because I don't know if they change the heights or sizes or any of that type of stuff. So. We will do that. We'll leave those. I'll probably tighten them some more though because they're not super tight just in case the truck needs to get moved around a little bit. And like I said, we'll get the brakes on it and stuff. So, and then uh, after that, when we get that done, I need to do a little bit of front suspension stuff, figure some stuff out there. I still got to put um, the steering box stabilizer on. But I didn't want to put that on there until I figured out what I was using for a pitman arm because the nut that holds that is holds the pitman arm, um, obviously, because it holds the sector shaft, right? And then I did want to do a little bit of talking. And then I have a power steering leak that I have, apparently have to fix. I'm hoping that I just overfilled it, which I know I did. I'm hoping that's what the problem is there. So it wasn't leaking until I overfilled it. So that's what we're after anyways. For now, um, I'm going to sign out and uh, we'll catch you right now. All right, guys, so working on the emergency brake, and I need this bracket, but I don't have one. This one's actually off Jason's truck. So what I'm going to do, being that I don't even have these holes in the frame, we're just going to make one out of this piece of angle iron, and then we'll just round the edges and stuff. I haven't decided whether I'm going to put a piece across the bottom. Like they have this piece across here, piece across here, and piece across here. This isn't even welded. So I'm not too worried about it having two pieces to it, but I don't know if I'm gonna put a piece across the bottom or not, cause this will be pretty stiff being it's actually angle iron. But we're gonna cut that notch out of it so it has that notch piece. And then I don't know if we're gonna weld it in or if we're gonna bolt it in or what we're gonna do just yet. But I'm gonna cut the piece out of here. And then also we gotta drill these holes for the cables to go into. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do.
All right, guys, we got the emergency brake all hooked up. Um, I had to make this little thing. I just used a couple little pieces of stuff that I had. It looks okay, I painted up. Nobody will know the difference, but the emergency brake will work. I'm gonna have to get some P-clamps because I don't have any P-clamps the right size to hold the emergency brake cables in the right spot. So I just put a couple zip ties on it here to start with. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that or not. Hold on. Let's get some light on the subject here for you guys. There we go. So I got the e-brake cable in there. Now I still have to put shock mounts. I still have to build some shock mounts. So I might see if I can utilize this. That's supposed to go on the side of the shock mount. This diff had the shock mounts cut off because it was in the first gen. That was before I got it, but everything should work okay. I think I might take this cable. I might take this cable and I might run it up over top of the leaf spring and then down. I'm not just a hundred percent sure either that, or maybe I'll put some more slack in it the other direction, like over this way. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. We'll see how we're going to get it finagled up here. See how she works out, but everything will work as far as that goes. And I do have to, I do have to buy some material or find one bracket because there's one bracket that, oh, let me get turned around here, that it bolts right here. It bolts right here, comes down, and it's like a piece of wire kind of idea. <clears throat> or up make something to go on there because like I said these cables aren't exactly the way they're supposed to be That's why we had to build the brackets and stuff If this was a, a an extended cab An extended cab short box or a long box regular cab or something you can buy the proper um, bracket that goes there, but Obviously it's not so we cannot so That has that done now I'm gonna squirt a little bit of paint on that. Uh, I might not even do that for now. I'll probably just leave it. I might spray a little bit of primer on it, maybe. Um, get some of the other stuff done first. <clears throat> so we got that done. And I think now what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to look at um, some front end stuff because I want to figure out what I got to do for the steering. If I'm going to change something or I'm not sure exactly what to do there yet. So I guess we look at that and I still have to bleed the brakes. I'll probably leave it in time lapse for bleeding the brakes. I've showed you guys how to bleed brakes before. Uh, and yeah, I gotta do the rear shocks. I know what I'm gonna order for a rear shock, so I'm gonna get that ordered. Just a stock uh, Bilstein 5100 is what I'm gonna put on the back. Uh, man, I can't think of anything else right now. I'm kind of losing ambition, to be totally honest with you. Out of the way. Really, the only thing I was worried about was right here is pretty tight. And I think what I'm gonna do, just for simplicity's sake, is I'm gonna pull this out and I'm just gonna cut the flat out of that and we'll just make it flat so that at full suspension crush, um, it can't touch. Cause everything else isn't too bad. Um, I know if I remember right, I'll have to just go back in the old memory banks. I believe that I have to cut one of these two shorter to get the right dimension there from side to side. So the steering wheel is straight and you got lock to lock. I I'm pretty sure that's what I have to do. It's been a while since I've done one, so I just can't remember off the top of my head. So I'll do a little bit of measuring. No big deal. Um, but I don't know. I probably won't be doing that today, but I was just looking at it, trying to figure out what to do, and I think that's what we're going to do. So that gets that. That's has that figured out just for simplicity's sake. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. You know how it is. Um, I do have new bushings to put in the sway bar. So I'm going to put the new bushings in the sway bar. I'm going to pull the sway bar down. I might pull that down today. I'm going to pull the sway bar down and get it all cleaned up, put the new bushings in here so that we have that done. I noticed that I still haven't tightened the shocks and stuff. I will do that at the same time as when I have the steering out because then I can do the track bar. This track bar bolt's not tight. It's actually not long enough or it's too long, sorry. So I can't do anything there or I can. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to start putting stuff on our list to make sure we get all that stuff done. I see I have a power steering leak. I'm not sure if it's leaking or over full because I know I did overfill it. So I'll have to look at that. I think it's just over full because it's not leaking on the floor right now, but it did, was leaking when I brought it in. So nonetheless, um, we do need to build the catch can for it still. I'll have to get some stuff for doing that. Like I said, I still got some stuff to do, um, but plugging away at it kind of idea. Um, more stuff did come in for this, the engine for this truck. 
Uh, basically, the only thing we're waiting on right now is injector nozzles for the injectors, but obviously we're not to that point yet because, well, we haven't got the engine built. So we're gonna start working on that engine probably this week. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I got a bunch of other stuff I gotta do in, in regular day-to-day -day life. So we're still working on this thing. I'm gonna do some stuff on this this week. Um, probably do a little bit more wiring stuff, get some of the stuff cleaned up underneath the hood that I wanna get cleaned up. Oh, I need to put diff fluid in it. Should actually, I'm gonna start writing the list down. You guys probably don't wanna watch me write the list. When I get the, the list written, uh, when I start working on the truck again, I will bring you um, and see the list and we'll start working on the stuff on the list again. So anyways, I'm gonna sign off for today. Like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments. And remember, it's not rocket science.